Another question. Once I was knitting, and night time I'm sitting there, the lamp was very dim, and one of the governors was passing by, and of course they used to have a lot of lights when that governor is passing. So he stopped while he was talking to someone, and I used the opportunity, and I saw it with that light that I was getting from there. Is there any sin on me for doing that? What should I do? He said, whatever you made money out of that, give it out as a sadaqah. She asked a few more questions, and she left. You know, Muhammad said to his son, follow this woman, see where she goes. He followed her and came back and informed her fa his father. She entered into the house of Bishr al-Hafi rahmatullahi alayhi. Imam Muhammad said, no wonder. I was thinking, who is this person? Who would ask these type of questions? He says, because she is from that house. And she happened to be the sister of Bishr al-Hafi rahmatullahi alayhi. And on another occasion, a woman asked that I was same similar type of question. No, she came and asked. I think she asked Bishr Hafi rahmatullahi alayhi. That the ruh of the ibadah that I had in my heart is gone. What should I do now? He said, think of some, something wrong that you must have done. She said, I thought a lot about it. I can't remember nothing. Still try to think. Think of something. And of course now, these are people not talking on our level now. People talking on some totally different level. So when they're talking about, look at something wrong you must have done, they're not talking about haram and sins that we normally consider some of the major sins. No, they are talking about anything that may not be in accordance with the, their taqwa, not our taqwa, according to their taqwa. So she says, I really looked into it, I couldn't think of anything, but that ruh of the ibadah is gone. How can I get it back? So, he puts his head down. After a few minutes, these were amazing people. After a few minutes, he says to her, don't you remember the night when the governor was passing and you were sewing the cloth and the light? Oh yes, I remember that night. And she explained, yes, as I was sewing and the governor was passing by and I saw in the light that uh, I got from uh, his, um, his group that were going and they had so much light, so I used that opportunity of uh, having the light. And then she goes further to explain that I have, I think she said, two dinar. And I buy a cloth from these two dinar, and I sew them, then I sell them back. That's all I have. What is the opinion about me now? If I give it out, it will be, everything is gone. I, I don't have nothing. And I survived through that. So now what is the opinion about me? What should I do with that? And he, he replies, he says, give it out. Give everything out. And then wait until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you something. She says, by doing this, would I get that back? The ruh of the ibadah that I used to have, would I get it back? Yes, you would, inshallah. And she goes back. So his son was sitting there, he asked him, he said, Dad, normally, this is not the fatwa. That she has to give that as a sadaqah. You could have told her that, okay, sell it and... Uh, keep the profit or just uh, give the profit out, at least keep your own money so that you can survive on it and you, can, you don't have to worry about anything else. He said, no son. The question, the way it was asked, 
and the person that is asking the question did not allow me to give her any lay out from this. She had to do what I told her because the type of question that was, she wants to get the ruh of the ibadah back, which means this is a person who really knows what is the ruh of the ibadah. For these type of people, they don't worry. If the, she was going to go and give out everything out, she doesn't have to worry about what she's going to do tomorrow. A person with that type of ruh of the ibadah, they don't have that worry. This is the ruh of the ibadah. So, zulumat, darknesses that we have to deal with. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allahu waliyyu alladheena amanu. Yukhrijuhum min al-zulumat ila al-nur. Allah is the helper of the believers. He takes them out of the darknesses, puts them and brings them into the nur. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَأَوْلِيَاهُمُ الطَّاغُودِ For the disbelievers, their helper are shayateen. They take them out of nur. يُخْرِجُونَهُمْ مِنَ النُورِ إِلَى الظُّلُمَاتِ Take them out of the nur into the zulumat. So we have to deal with these zulumat of things that are of the ma'asi, of the shirk, of the kufr, of the nifaq, of the sins. This is the second thing that we have to deal with. The third thing we have to deal with are shahawat, desires that are within our souls. And they keep on coming up. And these shahawat are telling us, desires are telling us, do this, eat this, commit this haram, look at this, listen to this, say this. All of these are shahawat, desires. And we talked early in some of our talks about shahawat. No need to go into any of the details of it. But this is the third step that a person has to deal with in his life. With the shahwat. After the shahwat, then we have to deal with shaitan, who is always there and trying to attack us every time and attack our iman. This is the fourth thing that we have to deal with. And number five, we have to deal with the atmosphere. We have to deal with the atmosphere that we are in. The atmosphere that is forcing us to stay away from the deen, to stay away from the sharia, to stay away from the sunnah. When a person will look at these things that we have to deal with, now you look at this ayah, وَلَوْ لَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ مَا زَكَى مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ أَبَدًا If it wasn't Allah's fadl and His rahmah, His bounties and His mercy, none of you ever would have been able to purify himself. Who would pass through all of these steps and then still pass? Forget about going through them. How many people will even think of going through it? How many people do even realize that there are these najasat out there, there are these zulumat out there, there are these shahawat out there. This is shaitan that is there. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi. Once someone asked him, كيف أصبحت? Abu Bakr al-Mirwazi rahmatullahi alayhi. Another great scholar, he went to visit Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi alayhi and asked him, How are you this morning? Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi said, You are asking a person who is full of responsibilities I'm loaded with responsibilities and you're asking me, how am I today? He says, every morning I wake up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is requiring me to fulfill the fara'id. And I have to worry about fulfilling these fara'id. I will be doing good that day if I fulfill the fara'id. If not, I'm not doing good this day. That's the first thing I have to worry about, my fara'id. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is requiring me, requiring me to fulfill the sunnahs. If I live that day according to the sunnah, then I'm doing good that day. If I don't live my life according to the sunnah, I'm not doing good that day. So Allah is requiring the person to fulfill the fara'id. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is requiring the person that fulfill the sunnahs. He says, then there are two angels sitting on my right and left. They both the whole day reminding me and requiring from me that I watch my deeds and I make sure that my deeds are correct and good. 
So they are continuously throughout the day they are watching me. 